Hey everyone, that crazy crowd here. And to, in this video, I'm going to show you how to run The Witcher 3 for the PC if you have a laptop or a PC that does not meet the minimum system requirements, which is a, um, a GTX, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660. And that's for the uh, desktop model. And uh, well, CPU doesn't really matter that much. I mean, it does, but as long as you have a modern CPU, you're pretty much able to run it. But with the video card, that's another story. With this guide, I'm hoping to show you how you can at least reach 30 frame about 70% of the time. I know it's not ideal, but you know, not everyone has the money to buy a beast of a machine. So uh, yeah, let's get started. First, I want you to open your preferred or favorite internet browser. For me, it's Chrome. And I want you to go to, uh, let me zoom it in. Yeah, there, see? Here's the link, I'll put it down in the description. It's www.nexusmods.com slash witcher3 slash mods slash 12 slash question mark, yeah. And once you hit that, you, you, know, you hit enter and um, you go there. And then you'll land in this page. So before you can actually download it, uh, you need to create an account in this website. It's pretty quick. I'm pretty sure there's a there's no email confirmation, but I might be wrong. It's been a while, but you just go ahead and do it. It won't take long. And then once you've done that, you go to you scroll down a bit, and then you see this files. I want you to click that. Wait for it to load, and then you got the standalone version, and you get the JRE version. Now you. Not too sure what, um, how these two differ, but I would get the standalone version simply because it's a bigger file, which means it's a lot more complete. And as you can see, the downloads are higher, 5,000 as opposed to 670. And you know, download manually. You'll get a list of um, links to download from. Pick whichever you want. And once the download finished, you close your browser. You go to wherever uh, your files go after they're downloaded. For me it's my downloads folder. Scroll down and here it is. No, that's not it. It is here. This is how it should look like. Double click that and then you'll be greeted with two folders and one executable file. And what, you want, what I want you to do is simply highlight them, copy them, and then you go where you installed the game. For me, it's in my external hard drive because I have a laptop with only 200 gigs of memory. And uh, for those of you wondering, yeah, it's probably going to run like shit on an external hard drive, but actually it's a Thunderbolt drive and the speed of it is enough to actually run most modern games. So here, here, I have the GOG version of um, Witcher 3, by the way, open it, and then you just paste it just right here right where the um, uh, where all the content is so I just right click paste I already did this they didn't have to once you pasted it wait for it and then you scroll down to the very bottom and you should see w3hc this is the file you would want to run double click that run and it brings us to this screen, or well, app, or whatever. So as you can see, there are many sub-menus here, fat tabs as we'd like to call them. And you can change most of the settings here that like doesn't have anything to do with the graphics, DLC, you know, alternative look, gameplay. Now GC, which means the garbage collector, it's, uh, it's RAM stuff pretty much. You don't really need to mess with that as long as you have around 4 gigs of RAM but what I want you to do is go to rendering this is where um, this is where we'll take our time to actually configure it as you can see you have post process here you can change most of these you can turn them off if you want the extra frames but uh, kind of a graphics whore so I'll leave some of them on turn off sharpening because I'm already running at a lower resolution so sharpening is not even gonna matter same with anti-aliasing it's just gonna look worse. What I want you to change is the uh, foliage. As you can see, if you actually highlight these labels, you get a default and an ultra preset. And um, 
I would recommend going below the default to get extra frames. So for this it's 12, I went down to 10. And for the grass density, uh, as you can see the default is 1600 and I went down to 500. Way below what the default is. Just, it's gonna look terrible, you'll, you'll see pop-ins everywhere. But it's better than it being off, because once it's off it looks like a barren wasteland and it kind of kills the immersion and it's not even worth playing in my opinion if it looks like that. Alright moving on you get texture size and um, for this I do only have a one gigabyte video card but I'm still running it at 2k uh, so it's up to you if you can manage with the stuttering. For me it's almost non-existent it runs pretty well and then you got decal chance and uh, yeah just like I mentioned before you get the defaults and set them a bit lower than the default. If you want, if you know, if you want to tinker with it, it's up to you. You can go in and out of this. Well, you gotta close the game first, but yeah. So Uber sampling definitely off. I mean, I didn't even know it was in The Witcher 3. It was in Witcher 2, and that was pretty much super sampling times four, if I remember correctly. Yeah, turn that off. And then here we have other settings um these are meshes so pretty much the geometry if i'm not mistaken of the game I'd, I'd leave them at the default because you don't want them to look like early ps1 cgi cutscenes and here you got temporal anti-aliasing it's on by default and um you know adds a bit of blur to all the edges if i'm not mistaken and you got shadows cascade shadows um, I like leaving these things on default because I'm pretty sure the trees and the uh, grass is the thing that kills the performance. And uh, most of these you can just tinker with them, lower them a bit from the default setting. It's nothing scientific about this because you're pretty much running it on hardware that's not supposed to run it according to the developers. And once you're done, you can, I guess we can check the other ones. These are resources, I wouldn't touch them because they could cause your game to crash if you run out of memory. You got visuals. I would lock it at 30 frames because simply because if you go above 30 frames it means your computer is working harder. And you got viewpoints. Yeah, this is the resolution I'm running. It's a 1280 by 720. And full screen of course. You don't want to run it on borderless windows because that means that the uh, graphics card in the CPU, um, they're not dedicated towards the application but rather towards the application and your desktop. So after you're done tinkering with everything and you think this is what your computer can run, and of course you can always change it, you would want to click save. So I did that just now. And once you uh, click save, you close the app. And it's gonna ask you one more time, do you want to save before quitting? Well, oh, that's up to you, you already saved it, so I might as well just say yes, just to be sure. And um, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna show you uh, the recording of The Witcher because I'm not running Fraps right now, and if I run Fraps, it's probably gonna run at 10 frames or 15, I don't know. Frap kills performance. But, you know, this will, this really works for me. Uh, when I first tried it, uh, my game was running at 15 frames. 15 to 20 frames but after tinkering with it I managed to get it at 30 frames most of the time except for Novigrad like most people have that problem but I hope this helps and um, thanks for watching